Hello YouTube, Tim here, and today I'd like to do a build along of a Hunger Games style straight bow. Now this is just going to be, you know, long bow, straight bow, flat bow, whatever you'd like. The terminal ends are going to be flattened. This is a design that Nick had created, and this is going to be useful for me right now. It's something that I need to make. So, we have 56 inch long, 3 quarter inch pipe. You could use larger pipe, however, than I'd scale it up to make it a bit longer. I think that would look really elegant if it were a little bit longer, but this is fine. This is a good length and it'll be a nice good lightweight bow. So 56 inches, measure in 9 inches from each side, and then to the center, which is 28 inches, the handle 3 inches on either side of that. Typically I taper a little bit in further, make it about 2.5 inches, but this is fine. This is totally fine. All we're going to do, heat the limbs, flatten them, and actually this is my precision jig. I don't use the screws when I'm indoors, but I can make it taller, shorter, however I like, to exactly the right size so then I can control the taper. I even have over here places where I can put bolts in on the other side if I want to leave it not completely flat on the other side. Say if you're going to insert sillas or something like that, this can make a better transition. So this is really cool, but for the most part for this sort of thing, just going to be flipping it upside down and using it to flatten like so. Let's get to work. All I had done to pre-prep the pipe here has been to take the back of a knife, a thin bladed, cheap stamped stainless steel knife, and scrape off the lettering. That's it. I just use a sh sh pushing motion and it comes off very easily. Other than that, the pipe has basically not been touched. So as I make the, uh, the pipe hot, I'm going to do little curly cues or figure eights just to distribute the heat evenly. If you just use nice long strokes like so, It'll be hotter here and here. You can do that, and that can be a little better, but I still find it just easier to go nice and slow, do curly cues and figure eights. And then later on, once the pipe starts to soften, you can start to touch it in different places and see where it's not fully softened yet, and then you can focus on those more. I also like to occasionally send some heat right down the pipe Heat it from the inside as well. With three quarter inch pipe, this typically takes about ooh, three to five minutes. A little bit longer if you're not using a heating channel like this, because that reflects a lot of heat right back up onto the pipe. If you're doing it in a cold garage, say, you might take even longer than this. And if the wind is blowing, oh boy, it could take you all day. Just depends on your conditions, the ambient conditions. So just keep moving. If you notice a particular spot getting shiny or looking wet, that probably means you've almost completely melted the plastic in that area. Not just softened it, but it's really, really close to melting and fusing, and you just don't want that to happen. That's a, a tiny, tiny step away from burning. And sometimes they don't go in that order, but that's just one of the signs you can use. Just look at the surface, and if it looks particularly plasticky or shiny, probably it's about time to back off from that spot if not already too late. Okay, for most of the inner portion we're pretty good, so now I'm just going to do a wide figure right here on the outside, and get it like so, before we go and flatten it.
Okay, we're looking good. So now, let's just go and flatten it. I like to use the floorboards to align it. So use the floorboards and the actual flattening jig itself. For the most part, I'm content to use body weight. I just put my knees on the same spot and just rest on it. We want this to be a fairly light bow, so this is totally fine how it is. Let me see if I can push you back a tiny bit. Make sure that you can get a good, good view of this. There. Cardboard. So, on wood, wood floors, the wood is more insulating and it takes a little bit longer for the plastic to fully harden again. If you're out on concrete, it happens like that. There's almost no delay. It's really just a matter of maybe one minute or less. In here, it could take a little bit longer, so you know, make yourself comfortable. Maybe have something to do while you're just sitting here, otherwise you're just kneeling. If you have something you can multitask with, it's not a bad idea. I do recommend trying to find something. I like to watch TV, for example, while I'm doing this. So then I'm not just sitting around doing nothing. Or I can fill out you know, paperwork, things that I have to get done. The, one of the important things is just remember exactly where you put your knees. And so then, assuming you put the exact same amount of weight on it, you're going to taper the pipe almost exactly the same. You're putting the same amount of force on the pipe. So I know that I have approximately one-third, one-third, one-third. My legs are evenly split on the, the board here. So it's a good marker. Use that as well as you know the handle where that starts. And then the other, only other factor that can really mess things up is your feet. Right here I have them just gently resting on the ground. I'm not holding them in the air to put my total full 100% body weight on this. I could, but I'm not. Sometimes when I want a little bit more, I'll just stand on it exactly like I'm doing now, and that'll flatten it a tiny bit more. And what you can do is you can bend over and look at it from the side, and you can see the profile that, that you get. And so then what you can do is once you put your, your weight onto it on the other side, look at it and see if it's the same, then you're good. If it's too much, then you can move a little bit back, move a little bit off, take a little weight off of it. If it's not enough, then you can move a little closer to the handle. And all those things are you know, going to adjust it just slightly. There are other ways to do it. I like using hand clamps. That if you have two, two boards, you can flatten it between them. And that works beautifully. This is just expedient, quick, very adjustable. Once you get the hang of it, I think this is the quickest and easiest way to do it. But it does require a little bit more control, which is really why I have those bolts there. I just don't want to use them indoors on my, my floor here and scratch up the kitchen. Suicide by wife, right? So, excellent. At this point, it's mostly cool and set, but what I can do is, it's if it were off kilter, not straight, it's very straight, this is almost perfect, you could brace around the curve and then you could pull side to side, up and down, however you wanted to, to adjust it into being as straight as can be. Okay, so that was it. I'm going to go do the exact same thing for the second limb, and then we can, uh, you can join me back when we shape the ends. And now here we are with both limbs flattened very, very nicely, very evenly. As you can see, that's pretty darn good. Even looking down the limb, you should be able to see that there's very, very little twist to it. So if you're careful, you have almost no adjustment to do. At this point, the next thing I want to tackle is heating and shaping the ends of the limbs. That's very easy. That's very easy, really. We're going to do that in a few stages using some of the tools we have here. Now for this, I'm going to reduce the heat, and I'm going to take it a little bit more carefully. Again, curly cues are warranted, and avoid heating the edges. PVC pipe, when it's creased, there's less area for the heat to dissipate into. And at that point, you risk the edges here overheating 
and when PVC overheats, it can burn. But more frequently with pipes like this, at the edges it'll simply start to split. That's very, very bad. We just want to bring this back to full round. So, curly cues all the way down on both sides. Taking your time. Now once you notice the ends start to puff, and you can speed that up by carefully just teasing it with a little bit of heat. And even just tease the edges with heat, but don't focus on them. If you do, like I said, you're risking burning and splitting the ends. With this particular bow, splitting the ends is probably not going to be that big of a deal since they're more likely than not going to be cut away. Nevertheless, I will recommend caution. I will advise caution with it. You're better off just taking your time. But as soon as it starts to puff, then you can start to hit the sides, and it will come round very quickly shortly thereafter. So it's already starting to puff here and here. Give it a little bit more heat on the end. And, and you see, you can visibly watch it puffing. Now, we can hit it from the sides. This is approximately the stage I would want it if I were going to make normal C, as if I were going to make recurves. But for this, we're going to do it a little bit farther. We want it to be very, very soft. A fairly small point. I take the point at which I heat, and I heat around that. I don't stop up and to that point. I go and put that centered on the heat gun. So really, it heats just a little bit beyond. Not super important, but that's just how I do it. This is hot. You can see how flexible, well, the top and bottom are hot, but since we haven't been heating the sides, they're not as flexible. So let's just continue heating it for a moment. This process is going to create a bow with static tips or fairly non-bending tips. That's characteristic of a particular style of bow. I think it's called the Malagabet or the Home Guard style bows. In this case, the tips are a bit on the short side, but it's still the same principle. They're stiff, thin, light, non-bending outer, outer limbs, and then you have a flexible, wider inner limb. So the principle is the same. So the idea now is that we want to take our clamp here which is just two blocks of 2x4 two with a hinge on the back. I'll show you that in a moment. And we want to clamp it like so. Just adjust it until you get the right amount out that you want. You want to go from the back of the 9 inches that we've marked all the way up to the tip. Not a sharp, sharp tip. Leave about, oh, I'd say half inch off. That's pretty good. So now, holding it tight, I can go and adjust it manually, just slightly here and there, and then use my uh, quick grip, the Irwin quick grip that I have, to clamp it. Typically, I would want to put a little bit more force on the tip than on the, the base. We want this to be fairly straight. We're going to shape this a little bit more in the future, so it's not that essential to get it perfect right now. However, I do want it straight, so I'm holding it such that I can sight down and make sure that the tip has been properly aligned with the rest of the limb and it's not being twisted. So you see back here, just a regular brass hinge, nothing special, nothing remarkable. 
This takes about five minutes, just a few screws and the hinge itself, two blocks, and you can create something like this. Okay, so we're actually almost done. I mean, I'm going to do the exact same thing to the other side. We're going to reheat the outer surface here, the back of the bow, and then flatten it a little bit more, straighten it out, just get it a little bit more shaped how we want it. We can then cut some of the flattened portion off, shape that a little bit, and do the exact same thing to the other side. At this point, it's you can see where things are headed, and you can see how it's shaping up. And I didn't mean that to be a, a pun. Cool. So at this point, I think I can probably take the I can probably take the quick grip off, and it's going to retain most of its shape, and probably just respond to a little bit of pressure if I need to do any last-minute corrections. That's pretty good. Let's just see what happens if I push and flex it a little bit like so. Essentially nothing? Okay, yeah, that's pretty well set. Okay, so we can reclamp that and shape it again. I'm going to do the exact same thing to the other side, and then we'll uh, perform the next operation. Welcome back. I have now tapered both limbs equally, and then there was a slight curve to them, so I just gently, gently, gently heated up the middle portion and manually took that out and made it straight. As you'll see, it actually curves back a little bit from the limb, but that's almost perfect. This one is perfectly straight, but it's offset a little bit. We're going to fix that now. So grabbing the clamp again, let's go and reclamp it. Make like a Beverly Hillbilly and clamp it. Okay. So once you're happy with where you've clamped it, to about there, say, let's go and get that on quite tight. Now, we're going to heat the front end here and flatten it so that it should pre present a single line from the body of the limb all the way to the tip. Once we're done with that, we're going to take it out and cut the back off and sand it and shape it and then cut the knocks and essentially the bow is done and usable at that, that point. I do want to sand it and give it a nice wood grain finish to make it look like it ought to, but that's a whole other story and I have many videos showing that so I probably won't. I'll just skip in another video. I'll show you the shooting of the bow. So at this stage, again, I'm going to turn the heat down to about eh, three-quarter power and I'm going to heat it like so. you got to remember, you're heating a very small section of pipe. This is like half a pipe, maybe less here, and at most half a pipe up here, so you don't want to overheat it. Not only can you cause the splitting that we've talked about, but you can also burn the pipe, That'll, you can make it brittle by overheating it. Just try and avoid it as much as you can. Okay, so we're focusing mostly right here on the transition between the limb and the outer limb. The inner limb and the outer limb. Once that's sufficiently warm, we're going to be able to attempt to flatten it a little bit. Okay, that should actually be enough. Let's just see. Take, looking at it from the side, when I press down on it, yes, I can see that I'm flattening it. So. Uh, okay, I'm going to take it out of the camera mount so I can give you a better angle of this, so forgive me for the uh, shaky cam, but basically here it is. You can see from the side, it's all flat now because I'm applying pressure at the base of the limb with my thumb. So there you go.
That's really all there is to it. Let's see if I can get you back into the camera mount one-handed. Well, I wasn't able to muscle that back into the mount one-handed. There we go. I can now show you the results. You see that nice, clean transition from the outer limb to the inner limb. Almost perfectly straight. That's really good. That's exactly what we wanted. And we haven't allowed the sia, or I'm calling it a sia, but it's just the rigid section of the limb. We haven't allowed it to expand. That's the exact same thing I'm going to do over here. So I won't need to show you that, because you've seen it now. It's the same thing. Just heat it, clamp it, heat it, flatten it. Particularly focusing on this area down here. And then what I did was, when it was clamped, applying pressure here at the base. And it makes it nice and straight. This is very elegant. Next step, you'll see, we're going to do the little bit of cutting and cut the knocks. And at that point, it's a shootable bow. Hello, YouTube. Here we are outside now basic stave of the uh, District 12 bow. Now, with the bandsaw, I'm going to cut the outer limbs so that they can then be filed down, shaped, and the knocks cut. Here we have it all plugged in and ready to go. My bandsaw. To loosen up the guard so I can raise it. And let's see. I want it just at an adequate height. So that is where we'll need it to be, right to perfect. Now let's go ahead and tighten it. We're ready to cut. I actually prefer drawing rather than pushing with longer pieces like this. That one was unsuccessful. It started to curve a little here. I'll have to recut that a little bit. Okay. In this case, let's try pushing. And I could be wrong, but it sounds to me like my other bandsaw tire just blew. I replaced one with urethane, a nice solid urethane tire. However, the one that exploded last year was extremely old and almost dry rotted. This appears to be the exact same, so I have a spare tire, I'll have to replace it. Well, I don't expect it to be a problem if I grabbed it and pulled it off, just for safety's sake. Go and unplug it first to eliminate the possibility of losing a hand or finger. We don't like that. Very inconvenient, very unfortunate. Nevertheless, this won't be too big of a problem. I'll just continue the cut with my coping saw to finish. You know what's going to happen. It'll end up just like so. So, given that, 
Let's just skip ahead to cutting the knocks and actually showing some other interesting stuff. Okay, YouTube, just one more quick note before we actually do the finishing and I can show the shooting. This is the, the totally completed bow, except for decoration. It's been sanded, the knocks have been cut, they need to be sanded down a little bit, but I cut them in at approximately a 45 degree angle. Here's the bow bending. It has a nice profile. Like I said, it's a beautiful bow. So I'll go decorate it and then you'll see it another time in the shooting. So thanks for watching YouTube. I hope you enjoy making this bow and I hope you built it along with me because it's a lot of fun. See you next time. And again, thanks for watching.